thought this was going to be like technology stuff. So we, I can still send it to Mr. Um, Brown so he can. I am recording. Okay. That means we now have to be on our best behavior. That's right. <laughs> and we have. <laughs> we have Mike. Oh, wait. It's not. No, it's not Mike. It's not Mike. I'm a lot uglier than Mike. <laughs> How are you doing athletic director and transportation at the same time? That's a handful. Yeah, I'm learning that. I'm <laughs> learning that every day. It's a... Uh, both of them are pretty full time. Yeah. I got I got Mark here, my right hand guy. He he he's kind of Mark good. Mark is good. I got him actually in here. Huh? No, this one I gotta watch this thing on. I got what to do with this thing here. So he's standing up on this one. Hello, <laughs> right. oh, Miss Fisher. Hello. Come on, they wanted this meeting. Where is everybody? Thelma's got to show up. I might have turned the air off a little while. We're trying to get the volume up a little louder. So I get all y'all started talking amongst yourselves. I'm gonna eat my sandwiches I got here sitting next to me. I hadn't had lunch yet. I'm getting hungry. Uh oh. I gotta work on my Santa Claus physique. So coach, how's it looking for football season? That's a, it's a million dollar question. You got one guy controlling it. You know, everybody everybody talks about triple A needs to decide. I mean, triple A isn't deciding anything. I mean, it's uh, it's governor. I mean, he's gonna tell us when we can start. And yeah, and like that, so. you know, they're gonna. I mean, they're not gonna allow. There, there's no way they're gonna allow spectators. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe some. I don't. You know, I, I we've kicked around different things like even each player getting like free tickets to give out or something. Or I, I, I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna work. I, you know. There's kind of like a lot of this stuff. It's kind of hard to plan for it because it may change tomorrow. I think it's going to change tomorrow myself. Yeah. I figure we got a, at least a 60% chance they're going to cancel the first semester, or at least a good chunk of it, because the numbers keep going up. I, d I disagree with you there. You think we're going to think, face to face? I think we will. And I think, uh, okay. and I don't know, I haven't heard anything, but just other than my opinion. Um, that's all we got. There's a, people, there's a lot of people that have got to send their kids back to school. They don't have any choice. Right. You know, if mom and dad are working, what are they going to do? I, I'm lucky enough my kids are all grown up, but I remember back then. Yeah. I mean, I mean and that's what me and my wife are talking about. If our kids were, you know, they're you know, my youngest is in Arkansas State, but, you know, if, uh, I mean, if it was us, we'd, we'd have to send them. We wouldn't have any choice. I mean, you got to work because I got to have a paycheck. Yeah, that's right. Those kids like to eat too. Yeah, I like having a roof over the head. Yeah. All right. So we should have more people coming in. The whole purpose of the meeting was for y'all to be able to talk amongst yourselves about what you're planning to do concerning transportation for the for the school year. So we can all y'all can share ideas and stuff like that. I mean, I've got one transportation, one school district who told me they're not going to change anything. You know, they weren't going to mandate masks in the school bus. They were going to load up the school bus the way they always have. The CDC is offering guidelines, and they, even though they've relaxed their, their stance on school, they haven't changed their stance on school buses. You know, they still want at least some sort of check on each student before they come in. They want each kid to sanitize their hands before they get on the bus. They're still wanting to social distance on the bus. You know, I things have changed now since the governor mandated masks. 
I pretty much made masks mandatory. But what are you going to do if a kid shows up on the bus and doesn't have a mask? Give them a mask. There you go. Not all my school districts are going to have enough masks to give all the school bus drivers. You know, and I've got 10 districts. You know, are we going to, are some of the districts going to be willing to tell the kids they can't get on the bus, Titus? No, you can't do that. I think we talked about it, you know, from our admin. I mean, yeah, obviously we're going to pick the kid up, um, you know, and hand him a mask and try to try to get him to put it on. But I mean, you know, I think it helped us out when the government the governor mandated mask. You know, I, I think that I think that helped the argument a little bit. What about social distancing on the bus? Well, Mark and I have talked about it. And I don't, I, I'm new. I don't mean to dominate the conversation, but there's only five of us on here, you know. Right. Uh, but we talked about it. And originally, I, I think it's impossible social distance on a full bus. But I honestly think a lot of that's going to take care of itself with a lot of kids staying at home. You know, I think, I think with the virtual learning, I think we're going to have a lot of them that uh, are not even going to be on a bus. Right. Know? Well, some of our schools are doing the, the virtual, the blended, which means even if the ones that are going to school, you're only going to have half the kids on Monday, Tuesday, and the other half the kids, say, on Wednesday, Thursday. That'll help your number. But That's actually, um, I'm sorry, James. Oh, James. That's, that's actually what we're doing at our district. We are doing um, like an A-day, B-day type thing where – we're two merged districts, so therefore our Marvel, um, Poplar Grove, Santuck, I think they're going to be on an A day, and then the Elaine, Snow Lake, and whatever other little areas are down there, they'll come on the next day, and so all of the buses will be scheduled to go to those specific areas to try and do the social distancing thing. And then also those are that those that are from the same families, they'll be seated together. Okay. Are you guys taking temperature? Um, I'm sorry, were you I I can't hear you if you're talking. Sorry. Someday, are you saying that someday some of the students will do virtual schooling and then the next day they will come to school? How are you planning that out? Are you talking to me? Yes, ma'am. Um, no, we have some that have chosen, for those who choose to do um, mm -hmm. virtual learning, that's what they'll do. Um, they can either do all virtual or they can do the blended and what I think if, if I'm not mistaken and they'll have the eight a b days and then on Friday I think everybody is virtual okay. is what the proposed plan is now at this time it's not set in stone and so what that allows you to be able to do is after you deal with those the the set um, on those days that you can be able to clean for the next group, if that makes sense. Yes, ma'am. Right. What are you going to do for sports teams if we do end up having sports? We're good. Now, West Memphis has got a huge football team. I know. I'm a Marion graduate. We used to hate playing those guys. I think they still do. Um, <laughs> but y'all would normally carry, what, three buses, four buses, just for players? Uh, if we carry everybody, we're carrying three full buses. We're carrying about probably 120 people, 110, somewhere around there. And if we're trying to social distance, you know, because we want to keep our team healthy, 
You know, I, I think probably what we'll do in our situation, of course, we're a little bit different with that many kids. Um, you know, we would, and a lot of times we'd do this if we were going, we'd carry everybody going to Marion or, or whatnot. But I mean, if we were going to Pine Bluff, we might, we'd probably usually carry a travel squad anyway. Okay. You know, so we would usually carry about 50 kids, uh, you know, of course, in the coaches. And a lot of times we'd carry two buses. I mean, we may, uh, we may end up having to take three buses even with our travel squad. Yeah. Um, you nice. know, I mean, that's, of course, golf and tennis. And, I mean, that'll kind of take care of itself. Uh, volleyball could be another issue. We, we may just have to take an extra bus or something. Because, um, again, we're going to be traveling. You know, Wonder and uh, West both play volleyball along with the high school. East does not. But, uh, you know, we may have to – Throw an extra bus I in you before I come to, get, the to get everybody there and be spaced. I, originally, we weren't I as worried. I mean, the social distancing. I just, I don't know how. I mean, that can that can almost get to be an impossibility on the school bus. Uh, I, I think a I lot agree. of it's going to take care of itself. But I mean, uh, one thing we talked about doing, as hot as it is, even. Uh, keeping the windows down on the bus. If nothing else, maybe at least the front and the back. Of course, that's going to take all the air out of it. Um, you know, having them wear masks, we're going to mount some hand sanitizers to the front seat and probably let it bump. And yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't, you know, I, we've heard of some school districts talking about running the same route two or three times in the morning, two or three times in the afternoon, and that's just not an option for us. So, you know, you get into, well, you get into a lot of things and you start running around two or three times. Thelma, Thelma Reed is trying to get in. I'm on mute for a second, guys. Y'all go ahead and talk amongst yourself. Let me get her in the meeting. Say Ty, Ty's where are you guys from? We from Lee County. Down we we um twenty miles south of Forest City. Yes, sir. I'm I'm very familiar. I was at Stuttgart and we were in the same conference there for years, so I, I know exactly where Marianne is. Yes, sir. I, I got a question for you. And maybe we can help each other. I will listen to that Mr. J say they it's a district is not is going to do the same thing that they did last year. Is that legal? I think so. I, I think, uh, I mean, he's obviously the expert on it, but I think they're just saying, you know, with the governor's mandate, you require a mask. Of course, obviously, how are you not going to pick up the kid? I mean, but the, the social distancing, uh, the social distancing, I, 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 don't, I don't see a way to get around some of that on a school bus. I don't either. You know, and I think that's the biggest thing. I, like I said, we're going to provide, you know, we've got masks. Uh, we're going to put a small deal of hand sanitizer, a little pump. I think we ordered some off Amazon that don't cost much and maybe put, uh, Mark was going to rig something up to where we could put a, uh, maybe a, like even a milk crate on the front seat of the bus and have that hand sanitizer mounted, encourage that. Uh, we have not, we haven't been told yet we're going to take math or uh, temperatures before they get on the bus. And so that may be something they tell us that we got to do. I just, I hate the thought of the driver having to sit there and do that, you know, as, as kids are getting on. But right. Again, if that's something they tell us we're going to have to do, then that's what we'll have to do. But that's you know, right. That's, uh, for our um, proposed plan, and I say it that way because I don't know, you know, it could change tomorrow. Um, we will have someone on the bus that will take temperatures as the children get on the bus. And um, they'll, um, they're wearing the mask as well. We ordered some also. Um, but you, I, to go back, is it Belmore? Is that how you pronounce it? It's Billy Elmore. Okay. Oh, Elmore. Okay. Yeah. Um, Based upon what you said, as far as the mandates from the governor, I, if I'm not mistaken, did he not say that 
if social dis the mask would be required if social distancing wasn't able to we weren't able to adhere excuse me adhere to that so i guess I so so i guess if they're on the bus and they have the mask on then technically it's okay i guess that's the way we read it titus what are you guys talking about are you talking about basically rolling on <laughs> He had to step out just a second. He got a cold call. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Doing temperatures before they got on the bus. You know, we just, <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. Mark. Mark just brought up a great point. If we take temperatures, what are you going to do with a kindergartner that gets goes to get on the bus at a bus stop and is running a little bit high of a fever? Hello, all. How are you doing? Hello. This is uh, Thelma Reed from Kip Delta. I came in uh, a little late, and I'm listening to everybody. So I came up with some uh, just rules and regulations of uh, things for my buses. We, we are going to have hand sanitizers, and I'm in the process of hiring some monitors and things now. But one of the little rules that I made up that they're gonna to give to the parent is, I'm going to request that the parents stay at the bus stop until the monitor takes the temperature. And I'm, I don't have it quite yet, but I'm gonna make a little note. So you know how you do the bus passes and things? I'm gonna make a little note saying that your child is not allowed to ride the bus because their temperature was whatever, whatever. and. I'm going to do it in three copies and keep it in a file that I have for when the parents come back. But I am requesting because naturally we cannot pick these children up at their house. And then when their temperature is too, you know, too much to allow them to run back into the house. So I am going to request that the parents stay at the bus stop until the temperature is taken and the children are allowed so to Ms. ride. Thelma, what, you, what, what about, and I'm filling in for Mr. Brown, so I don't, drive the bus that you can <laughs> if i say that's so. all right but you do transportation so come on with it um what about those parents who can't stay and then i don't know i can't no we so I, I am still that that was my question to uh to the schools and we are all because we have until august 24th to work out the kinks we are all working through that because as i told them uh so you have the very caring parents, and then you have these parents that want to return to their normally scheduled lives. You are going to have some parents that are going to roll up there, drop their kids off, and not necessarily go to work, but they're going to go back home. And we all, you know, we all know this. I have not worked out that part just yet. So they're, they're trying to get uh, some people to, 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 uh, to ride the bus or call someone, you know, have someone on standby that can come get these kids and take them back home and everything. But I haven't gotten that far just yet. Okay. Is it mandatory that you, that you check each child's temperature before they get on the bus? Well, you know, Miss, what's your name, young lady? Gwen Fisher. Miss Fisher. Yes, I, and my thing is with checking the temperature because you can be asymptomatic. Yes. To me. Yes. That would be. It, mm -hmm. it, to me, it doesn't matter if you do it or not because mm -hmm. I could come and I have a temperature and mm -hmm. still have COVID. Right. Come and I think I said that backwards, but y'all get the gist. Yeah, and, and that and see that was my concern. That was my concern too, because a lot of people have it. They don't have any symptoms mm -hmm. whatsoever. They have no fever. They have no coughing. They have no nothing. But they have still. But when they take the actual test, they have still been diagnosed. But that's just taking this temperature is just something that the school wants to do. Mm -hmm. And like I told them, if they're going to pay a bunch of people, it's because my drivers cannot do it. So if they want to pay a bunch of people to ride the bus, take it to temperature, sit the children and everything else, I'm I'm all for it. Uh, I just as as a I'm sorry, go ahead, Mr. Titus. See, see, um the difference between Ms. some of Miss Thelma routes and 
Charlie Brown routes and my routes, we don't sit a whole lot of time. And see, um, with just like most of my routes, it's stop and go, stop and go. And when you and, and the bus driver, that, that that's going to be really hard on the bus driver. For one, you got people ain't really stopping for buses, and putting that temperature check on them and recording it right, that's going to be hard on the bus driver. That really is. That's going to be really hard. Then you got to make sure they social your distance on the bus. So, to me, all of them, all the buses don't have to have an aid on. Now, now in the afternoon, they might want they might won't have to have one because they at school all day. But that AM, I can hear you. Ty, 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 hold on, Ty, there are some other people that are somehow in on this meeting. And they say they can hear and see us, but we can't hear and see them. Do you guys hear other people talking? No. No. No, ma'am. No. Okay, so you're on the wrong. You're on the wrong. You're on the wrong. You're on the call that I was on at first. Jay had to send me a new link. Who is it? I have. I have no. It, it's some superintendent and a couple other people that were in. And I could hear them talking just as I couldn't hear. I couldn't hear what Titus was saying because I could hear them in my head. You know what? I may still be in that other Zoom meeting. I am. It, Jay, they're in that other meeting. Oh, oh, God. Did I do it wrong? Am I out? No, you're in. You're still with us. I don't see you guys. Well, we see, we, we hear you, Thelma. We hear you. Okay. Well, Thelma, do you know who's in that other meeting? Can you see so I can email them? No, they, they, I think they're in that first, you know, that first Zoom meeting that I was in. I think they are in that because I was still, I was still in that meeting too. That's what I, right. uh, with, with Mr. Leggett. Okay, here comes Ms. Murdoch. We got her in. You know, I got to love Zoom. I'm pretty good at this normally. I'm not sure what happened. Today. And there you are. Okay, I'm back in. <laughs> uh, hey everybody, this is Superintendent Willie Murdoch, Lee County, and I was, I guess I was in the wrong one. I've uh, been sitting there listening with Mr. Leggett, uh, or Mr. Leggett, uh, yeah, and we could you in the first meeting. Mom, but we couldn't, couldn't see her, and uh, she was speaking to someone, we couldn't hear what they were saying, but now we're, we're, I just clicked back in, and it came up, so I don't know what's going on. Good to see everybody. Good, good to talk to you, Superintendent Murdoch. Titus, could you uh, tell me what you said before? Because I couldn't, I couldn't hear, uh, I couldn't hear what he was saying. His, he, he was saying something about the different routes and things. Yeah. He stepped out. Just he one stepped step. out. Right back. Basically, what he was saying, Miss Thelma, is based upon the routes that his he runs um, and Mr. Brown runs. That there is not a stop. Um, He's not sitting for it too long. It's kind of a stop and go. And it will be a lot on the bus driver if they're going to have to um, take temperatures themselves. So definitely an aid would be good for um, the bus route in the morning time, not necessarily the evening time, but the morning time um, yeah. to be able to assist with that. No, I, t I, told my I told my school district that there's no way that we could drive the bus, take the temperature, seat the children, and do all this other stuff and still make it, we would be all day long picking these children up. That's the reason they're getting AIDS to go on the buses. I see the logic, but you know, Coach Belmore started this question earlier and I still don't have a, a good answer from you guys. You got a mass bus stop. You got a kid on this bus stop who's running a fever. His parents aren't anywhere to be found. This is a young kid. What are you going to do? You cannot just leave that third grader standing at that bus That's stop right. and leave them. You can't do it. That's right. Would it not be the same in essence if you if someone drops their kid off at school and they go to the nurse and they're sick? No, that's not the same. And here's the reason, Ashley. Okay. Because they're on the school property where we can at least observe them. 
-hmm. If we take off and leave that kid sitting on the side of the road, you just put the school district liable for not taking care of that child who came to get on the bus. No, 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 no. no. I can't leave them. <laughs> are you can't, are you gonna are you gonna stop your bus route? Well, so since my school district is only doing three grades to start with, uh, when we come okay. back in August, we're doing kindergartners first and second grade. And so this is gonna cut the ridership down a lot. What what yeah. I would do and what I'm going to advise my people to do is to put the child on the bus because we can't cannot leave them, but put them like all the way in the back, in the corner by themselves and move the rest of the children up. Because as, as you say, we, we cannot leave them at the, at the bus stop because we are liable for them. And that's the only thing that I could possibly do. I would have to, you know, and, and since it's my law, I would own it. I would have to put that kid on the bus and just try as best as I could to social distance him from the rest of the children on the bus. Let And when I pulled up to the school, I would let all the other children off and then call whoever's in charge at the school and let them know, hey, this kid had a temperature of whatever, whatever. Their parents were nowhere to be seen and I just could not leave them at the bus stop. So oh, that was so, that was my statement that I was making. Like, yeah, but that's would it not me. be the same? Would it not be the same? Because if if a kid comes to school, we have to have we have the kid there so we can get in contact. Right, right. So I wasn't saying leave them. Uh, <laughs> I'm uh, saying we would still have to, in essence, take them with us. But they would, we would just like we would take a kid to the nurse and yes. leave the kid at the nurse. We would have to bring them and put them somewhere. Now I wouldn't advise putting them at the back because everything is being projected up. So if that kid calls or does anything, everything will be coming this way. I would put them at the front of the bus. Well, the reason I, I didn't do the front of the bus is because, well, if this was my last stop, it would be okay. <clears throat> but if he was coughing or whatever, I would be afraid he'd cough on every other kid that got on the bus after him. That's why I would put him all the way in the back, you know, by himself or whatever. Hey, uh, I know they're supposed to be, you know, we're going to try to get parents to do some of those checks before they ever send them to school. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we all know sometimes that'll happen, sometimes that won't. Yes. But what about the kid who is running 102 fever and is standing out there with 20 other kids waiting to get on at his stop? You know, I mean, at some point, I mean, parents are sending them out there and we know that's going to happen. But I mean, that just kind of throws a wrench into the whole deal. They, mm -hmm, they have a fever, mm -hmm. but they're already around them, you know? So I don't know. I think the biggest thing is going to be a school head effort to please check their temp. I mean, you know, uh, and I, again, we all know that will happen with some and some it won't happen at all. I mean, how many of us checked our temperature this morning before we left our house? And it's not going to really matter in a lot of instances because we know that parents will give their kids Motrin 30 minutes before they leave to get the fever to disappear mm -hmm. so they can get them to school. Yeah. I mean, that's been done for decades. It's like everything else. There's not, there's going to be mm -hmm. so many problems. Uh, mm -hmm. You just got to work through them. I mean, you know, the thing is we want to, we want to remove as much liability on our transportation system as we can. Okay. We don't want the school liable because we're, we're not trying. Nothing you guys are going to do is going to be perfect. Sorry to tell you that, and it's the truth. Uh, by the way, guys who don't have microphones, if you cl open up the chat at the bottom, you can type in questions and mm -hmm. comments, and we'd love to hear from you. But, um, you know, the whole purpose of this is for you all to figure out what we can do. Some of y'all's got some great ideas already. But, uh, you know, like Coach Elmore throwing that other question in, I honestly hadn't thought about that. Now, I've got all sorts of stuff from the CDC and everybody else under the sun about recommendations mm -hmm. for transportation. You know, one of the recommendations is if you don't have masks, you don't put more than seven people on a 56 passenger bus. And with masks, they're telling you to only put 28 on there. But if you do that, you're going to end up having to double up on your routes. You know, unless you're doing blended learning, hopefully that'll help alleviate part of the problem. But you know, what are you going to do, guys? Okay, I'll shut up now.
Well, somebody take the reins. <laughs> I like the ideas, and I mean, I'm going to run that by our superintendent as far as, you know, is that something we want to consider as a temperature on the bus stop? I, I don't believe we will, but I think that's probably something out of this meeting so far that I probably would take to him and see, you know, get his direction on what he wants us to do, and Mr. Collins. Mr. Elmore, I just am... Uh, Maybe they'll eliminate that part only because it does take so long and it really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a requirement though. I don't, I don't think, I, I, I think the mandate so far that we've gotten say, uh, they encourage the parents to do that. I, yes. Our schools release some things and I don't know, um, I don't know that temperature checks as they get on a bus are encouraged. I think they're probably gonna check them maybe as they go into the school um, but I don't, I don't, I may be wrong. And again, you guys are much more experienced at this than I am. And I need to shut up and listen, but I don't think, I don't know. I don't, from what I've read, I don't know that it's necessarily required. I don't think it's a bad idea if you got the means to do it, but I, I don't know that it's required as, it, as it's written now. Maybe I'm, I mean, am I wrong on that or am I, am I thinking, I have not seen it as a requirement. Uh, I think it's just the schools that want this, the different school district that want this did because I've had several, several, several meetings uh, with the people in power at my school. And I have told them my ideas because when they were talking about taking the temperatures because, well, let me, let me just tell you this. So my school district wanted me to stop at every child's house, take their temperature. And if their temperature was more than what it was supposed to be, then the kids could run right back in the house. I told them I was not going to do that because school would be over before I ever finished with the routes and things. It just, you know, it wasn't acceptable. But uh, the temperature taking is something that people just have a great idea because, you know, they take your temperature before you go into the doctor's office and everything else. But I don't think the people that are making the re rules and things actually realize how long this will take. And I just don't. Hello. Hello. <laughs> All right, so I guess I'll moderate even though I don't want to. Come on. All right, so we talked about temperature. Y'all got to come up with some ideas on that if you're going to do it or not. I, I mean, I don't make policy for any of your school districts. Heck, you don't make policy for your schools. All you can do is make the recommendation to principal, superintendent, school board, and hopefully they'll be smart enough to listen to you. And, I, and in most instances, I think they will. But then, okay, let's talk about cleaning the buses. Who's going to be responsible for disinfecting the buses and how often are you going to do it? And do you have enough supplies to do it? So I did not wait on my school district because they move a little bit slow to me and I'm a, I'm a plotter and a planner. I already have all types of... Uh, and it may not be exactly what I need, but I, I have pine salt, I have disinfectant, I have everything that sells, says kill 99.9% .9 germs. I bought some uh, just sprayers, like you spray your flowers and things with those two, three gallon sprayers that you spray stuff with. We are going to uh, mix this up and we're gonna just spray the buses down and just wipe them down after the runs and things until okay, the school you open your email and see that link I gave you until the school comes up with uh, open your email whatever they're going to come up with we're just going to wipe the you bus down after every run what happened? on Friday nobody is going to school so on Friday we will be able to give the buses a deep clean yeah so that that's what that's what I came up with you know we we've, we've got 
uh, a couple of those mister machines. Is it loaded on your computer? We've got a couple mm -hmm. of gentlemen that are down here and um, during the day, right. a couple Go of drivers of mm -hmm. and and we're going to for what it's worth. I'm recording. We're going to have each bus when it comes back in the yard misted. But I want you in on it. Yeah. So every every time when it comes back. Um, mm -hmm. But we've got we've got some buses that won't return here. They'll return to either a junior high because it's a teacher driving it, or we'll have. Mm -hmm. Um, actually a couple at the high school and then we'll have, we have some that like run to the download. college. Uh, mm -hmm. And so those drivers are going to be responsible for every time the bus unloads, basically go back spraying it down. Uh, our maintenance department's got some really good stuff that supposedly you spray and you don't wipe and it does mm -hmm. the job in like 30 seconds. And I think that's, that's kind of our plan. Yeah. We got a good uh, meeting going. We're bringing up a lot of good stuff, but uh, that's, that's kind of, Basically, every time a bus empties, it should be yes. sprayed down. And you the way the and, and the way I sold this to my people here? is so they have been out of work for a while. You know, Kip paid them for a while, but their money ran out, and you know they were getting unemployment. So they are looking at this as more hours and things. You know, if they all band together, they can get this done in you know just a Three. little, little right. time because we're only like in Blava, we'll only be running four routes in the morning, five routes in the evening because right. they don't, you know, they don't have as many kids. In Helena, we're going to run nine routes. But if it's the same bus, like I told them, if it's the same bus every day and we spray it down like I want to, as hot as it is on these nice days, you may not have anything to wipe down. Like you said, the stuff just clears. By us, you know, giving it a light spray and everything, it could potentially just about dry itself. But I do want to spray them down every morning when they come back in and in the evening so the school can see that we are trying to do our part with this. Mr. Um, Elmore, you mentioned um, that some of your buses go to different schools. So how do who's the accountability person to say, and I know that's crazy, but you know, to make sure that the stuff is actually being done, because you, it's it's not it's second nature to someone who's having to actually get on there and uh, utilize them all the time to make sure that it's safe. But somebody who may be a little bit lazy and may not want to clean the bus, how who's the accountability person to make sure that when I step on the bus, it smells like it's been cleaned? Well, the the only thing we could come up with there is just have a little check off sheet. And kind of okay. keep it with the tree trip pre-trip um there's no you know uh, there's probably and i think you know our schools talked about doing the same thing with teachers you know they're going to walk around and spray desks and stuff as class changes but um i, I there's not a cell fail proof system okay. to do that that's a great question but i i mean we do plan on putting i mean even if it's a monthly checkoff sheet you know where they just bring it in once a month with their pre-trips and mm -hmm. Um, you know, we can just put that in the bus file is one thing that we've talked about. But again, it's not perfect, but I don't know that any of this is. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> How are y'all sitting with uh, substitute drivers? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. You know, I say all the time that bus drivers are like little gold nuggets. If you find one, you better try to hold on to it. I don't have any substitute drivers. Well, yes, I do. I have one. My lead bus driver, she doesn't have a route right now, but that's it. Um, our district, um, right now, I think um, we only have two drivers, as a matter of fact. We have one that was um, here, but he says he will sub, but that's it. So that kind of eliminates one of the drivers so technically we only have two drivers all right so got, everybody's got plenty of drivers right no sarcasm guys sorry I got right. up here <laughs> so when we get a bus driver that pops positive and we got to take them off the route what are you going to do have you started thinking about how you can modify routes if you have to and all that kind of stuff oh yeah Oh, hit the obvious stuff. Anything we're missing? I mean, we've got the 
we have to, we've discussed a little bit about the social distancing, if we can do it, which hopefully it's going to take care of itself in our schools that are doing the split schedule. But not all of our schools are doing split schedule. I've got two schools that are sending everybody every day. I didn't, they, they're not here, so I can't ask them what they're doing. But if, you know, with the blended schedule, you think it's going to be enough? James, going back to the substitute driver, I, <laughs> good luck on that. I, I, I think that's going to be, that could be our biggest headache, in my opinion. I mean, but at some point, they're going to shut your school down. You know, I mean, like with us, with our elementaries and junior highs, uh, there may be a deal where, you know, they may shut down for a day or two, and that might give us a little bit of room to breathe. But I, I don't know. You know, we're, we've, we're pretty fortunate as far as the number of substitute drivers we've got. I mean, my only other option is begging coaches that are not in season. You know, we have several with CDLs, but literally begging them, hey, would you mind driving around? Right. But I don't, I don't want to do that. But, you know, that's, these are uncharted waters here. Titus, you've been quiet the whole time. That is so unlike you. Yeah, yeah I've just been sitting here listening. Hey, I got a question. How many of y'all use actual seating charts and abide by those seating charts? Because that's one thing that <clears throat> kind of worries me a little bit. How do you social distance with a seating chart? Okay, you're supposed to sit here, but the kids in front of you and behind you, those seats are full. You know, it's like sitting in an airplane. You know, why not spread out? You know, well, then there blows your seating chart out of the water. You know, I'm curious as to know how many of you actually use, and honestly, how many of you enforce your seating charts? Well, we didn't. We didn't. Um, we didn't on ours. Um, but what we did was the ones out in the county they sat in the same seat every day it, and so when i got buses with cameras on it it made a world of difference when, when i get when them buses came with cameras on them and i can go back and say johnny you did this and he said no i didn't and we can go pull the video and kid back to the school and show it to the principal and show it to him it made all the world in difference. That would yeah. really help to get away from that seating chart. Yeah, that, that's that's one thing we're kind of counting on here as well. But you know, I've heard talk of okay, this kid was sitting on the right side on the third row, and so the kids immediately sitting around them. You know, are those you know? I, I've dealt with the athletic part of this. So the only reason I know this is because I've actually, you know, we've had some kids test positive. And, you know, I'm a, I am I can see that coming. Well, what kids were sitting in the row in front of him, behind him, and directly across from him or her. And then, you know, I, I but again, if you set a if you set a hard, firm seating chart, sure they're sitting in those seats, but then then that eliminates some of the social distancing. So I was just kind of, that's what I was kind of fishing for on, see if you guys had any thoughts on that. So in the past, uh, so in the past, Kip Delta has not enforced the seating charts like we have seating charts, but we have not enforced them uh, with this virus. And I wrote all of this up for them. We are going to enforce the seating charts. You are going to have to sit. That's why we're going to have monitors on the bus every day it is going to be their job to make sure that you're sitting where you're supposed to be sitting and if you're not in your seat um, you're going to get a write up also just because little janie is having a birthday party or a sleepover you guys are not going to be able to ride the bus to her house you're going to have to get to her house as it's not going to be any more this bus hopping you know, like going to the babysitter's house, going here, going there. You are going to be assigned to a bus, and that is the bus you're going to be able. You that that's the bus that you're going to have to ride. 
I'm go I'm going to cut out every last bit of this uh this bus hopping because with them only wanting so many children on the bus, we we only have so many seats. You know, and that's what uh that's what I explained to them. It's a lot of stuff that we have done in the past and that I have allowed in the past that we're not going to allow this school term until we see how this virus is going to play out. You know, one of the bus write-ups I've seen on recommendations said, um, going on your buses and using tape to mark where people can sit and marking the seats that are available for sitting in, whether you're using bus charts or not, those would be the only places people can sit. If there's no tape there, you can't sit there. You know, I don't know if that would help. For me, that's just another way for the kids to pull up the tape and tear up the seats. Yeah. But is there another way to mark seats or something like that to designate where the students can actually sit so you got a little bit of organization? I have to put in one kid to a seat. What was that, Titus? No, that wasn't me. Oh. That hmm. was somebody else, so. But if you wanted to, if you wanted to mark the seat, instead of putting the tape on you so like you know well you guys know that tape comes in all different colors you can you can get it any color you want what's to keep you from taping the seat down around the bottom where the the steel beams and things are if you wanted to just mark like every other seat or so you could wrap some tape around there it would not bother the seat at all but you still could tell the children you know, wherever you see this blue tape, green tape, gold tape, whatever it is, wherever you see that tape at, you can't sit there. By the way, Coach Elmore, I like your idea of the seating charts. I think it'd make things a whole lot easier mm -hmm. if it does pop possible. I don't, I don't know if it does or not. For one, you, you've got to, that's what I was, I was trying to ask for input because Ben, that's one more thing you got to enforce. Yeah. And, and uh, again, it'll limit, I mean, it'll, it could potentially eliminate some of your distancing if, if you require a kid to sit in one seat. And I, I just, to me, that was, I feel like we got a solid plan on our disinfecting. I feel like we got a solid plan on our mask, our hand sanitizer. The seating chart deal is something that I'm, I'm having to, we're, we're, we're actually working through and I, I don't know that we've got a perfect answer because of those things. But the little people like a seating chart. They like sitting in the same seat every day. It's the, it's the big people that you're going to have problems with because they want to sit with their friends because I have driven the bus and the little people have stopped me several times telling me, uh, Miss Reed, so-and-so is sitting in my seat. So it's not, and, and the little children are the ones that I worry about. Yeah, you're always gonna have the informant on there. <laughs> on there no, nah, he's not informant. He just don't want you sitting in his, that yeah. is his seat. And he don't want you sitting in his seat. Any other areas? Lyle, can you talk? Okay, Austin, Steve, Lyle, if y'all can't talk, chat if you got any questions or comments. Come on. <laughs> Lyle just texted me. Nope, no comment. All right, guys, look, if y'all got any other comments, I'm recording this message. I'm recording this meeting, okay? If you want me to send you a copy so y'all can review it and look over it, fine. Don't hesitate to get in touch with each other. Yeah. You know, you, you're the best source for each other. I don't, I'm not the bus driving transportation director. I'm just... <laughs> I'm just the one trying to get y'all together so y'all can share ideas. Um, I think y'all got some solid plans. 
Uh, if y'all want to put your phone numbers down in the chat window so y'all can share them with each other, Coach Elmore's already done it. Um, you know, use each other, guys. Y'all are a great source for each other. These are all the transportation directors except for two. And um, I'm going to call Steve again. Steve, you can hear me. I'm going to call you on your cell phone when we get out of this meeting. I have a couple of questions for you. All right, Titus, have you found the keyboard yet? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm working on it. Why don't you let Gwen do it? Well, yeah, she's good at this. Well, like I said, y'all are the best resource for each other. Um, you know, I don't know that one. My Alexa, uh, stop. All right, we all got anything else? Or are we going to end it? I got, I got one question. Yes, one. Do we, um, I was listening to you say one school district was not going to go by the guidelines. They just gonna do what they did last year. Is that legal? Sure. Everything that they've gotten so far has been a recommendation. The governor hadn't come out and mandated anything in particular. You know, we've got schools that are letting everybody come five days a week you know, and letting the parents decide either virtual or face-to-face. -face. We've got school districts that are mandating if you're going to be in that school district, you got to go to school every day, face-to-face, -face, period. Wow. You can do either one. You don't even have to offer virtual. Think about this, guys. Do we have to provide bus transportation? Mm. Really, do you? Do, does a school district have to offer bus transportation? Uh, no, it does not. It does? No, bus no. transportation, bus transportation is not a right. It's a privilege. It's it's something we do. But if it came down to it, even if the buses weren't running, they could say we want you at school. Yeah. Well, I guess so. Now, what we do is, you know, what y'all do is a service that it has to be. I mean, you know, it's the right thing to do. But the whole thought process here has got to be based on two things. Number one, keeping the kids safe. Number two, keeping the drivers and the staff safe. And you got to worry about both of those problems. As we've already discussed, nobody's got an overrun, you know, nobody's got an overabundance of substitute drivers. And do we want to lose a driver? No, sir. No. So we got to find that fine line. We got to keep our drivers safe and we got to keep our students safe. I got one more question, too. What is your thought on um, transportation? I mean, what's your thought on bus drivers taking temperatures? My thought, my personal thought? Yes. Well, if this will buy you, you know, this and 50 cents will buy you a cup of coffee, but I don't think you got time to do it. I think we're going to have some buses are going to have to split routes before it's over and done with. Okay. And if we have to do that, you know, it's going to take twice as long for a route to be run. And they're going to have to disinfect between each route. Yeah. Is that going to yeah. allow adequate time for our bus drivers? to actually take temperatures and log the temperatures on a piece of paper. Yeah, that, that, that was, that really was scared me. Titus, you can, you can beat the temperature checks. Parents have been doing it for decades. They got a kid running a fever. Like we talked about, they give them some Motrin. The fever disappears. The kids go to school. They're still sick. Yeah. I mean, what did we do when we didn't have COVID and we just had flu? Yeah. If we had a flu bug going around, what did you tell kids who were sick? 
Stay at home. There you go. Did like stay at home? Yeah. <laughs> no, a lot of them still came to school. Yeah, some of them did. But some of them did, but a lot of them still came to school. And what is a school? A school is a huge petri dish. I mean, teachers get sick. Why? Because kids get sick and we're around kids all the time. That's right. You know, we can do the social distancing. We can do everything. We're going to have kids that are going to get sick. We got teachers are going to get sick. We got bus drivers are going to get sick. All we can do is try to cut the numbers and play the game. We can try to keep them as safe as we possibly can. That's all this all comes down to. We can be as responsible as we can and try to come up with the best program we can, whether it's social distancing, hand, you know, hand sanitizing, checking temperatures, if that's the way you want to go. Uh, I like the bus monitors myself that, that TK's doing. I think a bus monitor in there will help you, you know, Billy, you, you're talking about being able to have the kids sit in their right assigned seat. If you had a monitor on every bus, they could help enforce that. But you got to find teachers who are willing to be bus monitors. Good luck. Let me know how that goes for you. You, you know, it, it's whatever's going to work. Every district's going to be different because we're all different. But, you know, the biggest thing is y'all use each other as a resource. If you've got a problem, got a question, Call somebody who left their phone number over there. You know, chat with them. Go over some stuff with them. Um, one thing I love about working with you guys is nobody has all the right answers, but I put all you guys together, man. You come up with some great answers. Mm -hmm. Because everybody thinks something different and everybody's got something to throw in there. But you got to get together to do it. Yes, sir. All right, we've been at it almost an hour. What else you got, guys, before we put call it to an end? Anything else? All right, you can find CDC recommendations on their webpage. And that's all they are is recommendations. As for whether we're going back to school and if any other mandates are going to come out, I, I've got a device that I'm actually using to try to predict what's going on. I've had it for 20 years. It's called a magic eight ball. <laughs> I shake it up, turn it upside down, and I ask it a question. It is, it's about as accurate as anything else. Nobody knows what the state's going to do. All we can do is wait. But in the meanwhile, y'all stay loose, stay in touch with each other. And if you want me to put another one of these things together before school starts, let me know. I will. Um, yeah, yeah, we should. TK? Of course, of course. Y'all want to put it out two weeks and do it, say, the 14th of August or somewhere around then? Y'all good about that time? That'll give you 10 days before school starts. Yes. Any time anytime is good for me. Coach Elmore, you good with that? Yep. All right, we'll do it again. 10 days, maybe we'll have some more answers. But uh, hopefully y'all got some ideas from the other folks to get you on track. Like I said, call each other. I am recording this. Do you all want me to send you all a link to the recording? Send it to me, Jay. Will you do that for me as well? And Jay, will you include me on the next one that you send out so I can make sure that Mr. Brown is set up? No. He said no. <laughs> he's, just, he's just playing. He's just playing. Jay, send me the link to the meeting also, please. I'll send everybody on here. Everybody who attended will get a copy of the link. Okay. All right. And Ashley, I'll, I'll try to remember, but I'm going to sleep since between now and then. So, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll include you. Well, all right, guys. If, if you ladies and gentlemen don't see my name on the next email, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you all for your time, uh, for offering help to each other. In the meanwhile, Austin, Steve, Lyle, find some computers with microphones so you can actually join in. Um, and Steve, stand by for a phone call. All right, talk to you guys later. I'm gonna end it now. Bye. I All enjoy. Right. I enjoyed this, you guys. I enjoyed this. Have a great day. Bye bye. Okay.